Medina Country Club outside of Chicago played host to the 39th playing of the Ryder Cup matches. Captain Jose Maria Olathabal led a confident group of European players, all but one of them possessing previous experience in golf's greatest team competition. On the other side, United States Captain Davis Love III had high hopes that the four first-timers on his team could add the energy and competitive fire that was required to wrest the cup back from the favored Europeans. No rookie embodied the attributes that Captain Love was looking for more than Keegan Bradley, and the 2011 PGA Champions enthusiasm was on full display on the first day of competition. Paired with nine-time Ryder Cup veteran Phil Mickelson, the duo mowed right through the European team of Luke Donald and Sergio Garcia in the morning foursomes, punctuated by Keegan's long birdie on 15 to close out the match. In their afternoon four-ball match, it was Phil's turn for heroics. His tee shot on 17, finishing a few feet from the hole, putting the final touch on a two-and-one victory over Rory McIlroy and Graham McDowell. Clearly, the Americans had found something special in the pairing of Keegan and Phil, and the home side rode that momentum to a 5-3 lead after day one of competition. On Saturday morning, Bubba Watson took the Ryder Cup atmosphere to new heights, exalting the crowd as he hit his first tee shot of the morning foursomes. A fitting start to the morning that would see many roars for the U.S. The Americans extended their overall lead, winning three out of the four matches, and things were looking desperate for the visitors. Their savior would be the indomitable Ian Poulter, who has shown time and time again in this competition an uncanny ability to raise his game to near invincibility. In danger of losing yet another session in the afternoon four ball, the Europeans called on their stalwart to stem the tide and he did so in spectacular fashion. Poulter closed his four balls match with five straight birdies, none bigger than the one on 18 that gave him and McElroy a one-up win over Zach Johnson and Jason Duffner. But despite Poulter's heroics, the Europeans faced a four-point deficit going into Sunday singles. A significant lead, but not insurmountable, as Olathebel is well aware. He witnessed firsthand the greatest comeback in Ryder Cup history then by the Americans at the Country Club in Brookline in 1999. In addition to that bit of history, Olathebel could draw on another bit of inspiration for his team, the memory of his longtime Ryder Cup partner and dear friend Seve Ballesteros. On Sunday, Seve's presence in the minds of the Europeans was unmistakable, from the symbols on their bags to the navy and white color scheme of their uniforms. And Seve's passion and go-for-broke style shined through in the play of the entire squad. The Europeans blitzed the top of the singles draw, the leaderboard awash in blue. When this long downhill birdie putt from Justin Rose dove in the hole at 17, the comeback was in full force. The Europeans were rolling and the pressure was starting to get to the Americans. In the end, it was up to Martin Keimer, a player that had come into the week with shaky confidence and had played in only one match the previous two days. But there he was, on the 18th green, with a putt to cap off an incredible rally and keep the cup for the Europeans. Putting to rest the memory of Bernard Langer at Kiowa, this German was up to the task. Standing in the 18th fairway, Captain Olafabo looked skyward to Seve, and his team celebrated their greatest victory since the breakthrough at the Belfry in 1985.